Now before we begin to discuss the five pillars of Islam, I want to explain that when it comes to worship in the religion, there are voluntary slash encouraged acts of worship as well as obligatory acts of worship. In this video, we are only going to focus on the obligatory acts of worship and the reasons for this are explained in the following hadith. A man questioned the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, Do you think that if I perform the obligatory prayers, fast in Ramadan, treat as lawful that which is halal and treat as forbidden that which is haram and do not increase upon that in any voluntary good deeds, then I shall enter paradise. He, peace be upon him, replied, yes. In this hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not mention any of the voluntary acts, indicating that it is permissible to leave them. The Prophet did not mention the voluntary acts to the man, to make the religion easy for him, especially since he had recently accepted Islam and he wanted to prevent the man from believing that these acts were obligatory. Now we can understand from this that as new Muslims we do not need to overwhelm ourselves with too much information or actions. Firstly gain the Islamic core foundation and then as we grow closer to Allah and increase in faith, we will then have the desire and the ability to perform the voluntary acts alongside the obligatory ones. Now we need to discuss what the man means in this hadith. The man is saying that he will pray, but only the obligatory prayers. He will only give mandatory charity, he will only fast during Ramadan, and he will make Hajj once. And it is in these actions that he will neither increase nor decrease. The man does not mean that he will backbite, oppress people, and continue sinning whilst only performing these minimum actions. He is still obligated to behave properly, fulfill his responsibilities, and keep away from sinning. We are now going to listen to two verses from the Qur'an which I believe relate to this topic. These verses are referencing those who permit what Allah has made lawful and forbid that which Allah has made unlawful. In addition, these individuals do not try to change the meaning or context of the hadith or Quranic verses for any personal reasons. They accept Islam as it has been stated by Allah wholeheartedly. It is important however to acknowledge that we all have our own personal desires or inclinations towards certain wrong actions. As long as we struggle against ourselves and refrain from trying to change the meaning of the Quran and the Sunnah to justify our own wrong actions, then it is a personal struggle.